Here we go, folks. Stay tuned and watch how I turn this into this in a few simple steps using Stone Coat Epoxy. What's up guys, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy and today I'm gonna to take carbon fiber and apply it over this nasty particle board desk. I work for Stone Coat Countertops and I have for the past 10 years and these are the desks we're working with. That's insane, that's silly, and I'm gonna change that starting right now. So the first step, I'm gonna break this down. You can never have epoxy pouring up here that's gonna, it's gonna drip down to the lower one. And then we'll apply this black carbon fiber that I picked up on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. This stuff is epic. It's actually gonna reinforce this. It's real carbon fiber. Uh, I'll put down about two ounces per square foot of just our normal art coat. I'm not gonna go with a quick coat. I don't wanna be in a rush, but if you are in a rush, you can also use quick coat for this step. I'll spread that out evenly. I'll coat my edges, and then I'm gonna put my carbon fiber fabric right over that epoxy. And using a magic trowel or a shower squeegee or even a Bondo spreader, I'm gonna make that nice and even, make it flow over my edges, and then we'll let that dry. I'll come back tomorrow and apply a three ounce per square foot. Let that cure, and that should do the trick. If I have a little high points after that first coat, I'll follow it up with a second coat or sand down the high points and apply the ultimate top coat. Hey, that's a good idea. Let me know in the comments below. Do you want to see what the ultimate top coat natural and glossy looks like over black carbon fiber? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to get this thing broke down and get started working. Here we go. This is a eighth inch roundover bit. I'm gonna do this on the top and bottom, but before I do that, I'm gonna cut me a radius. So guys, what, a pro tip when cutting these radiuses is I post up my finger here and then I'm not allowing my jigsaw to go past that finger so it won't dive in and, and give me a big wowzer. So I post up right here and then I just walk that jigsaw around keeping my finger as like, a backstop. Just like in a kitchen around your ovens, your cooktops, you don't want to sand any topical grease and grime into the laminate. So start out first with a quick clean with some TSP. It's a great cleaner degreaser to get all that crap out of there before you put another coating over something, especially when it's slick. TSP is your cleaner and degreaser and water or isopropyl is going to clean that residue off of there. So. Um, you need to get the TSP residue out of there. It'll leave a film behind. Then the next step, I'm gonna round over my corner so this top bar matches my lower bar, and then I'll round the top and bottom just like I did on that table. So over here, I have raw particle board. You never wanna apply epoxy over raw particle board on the edges especially. The particle board is gonna off gas a little bit. We're putting carbon fiber, which is gonna cover that, and then we're coming back with more epoxy, so I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with my edges. It's like a sponge. It's like SpongeBob particle board pants is gonna suck in all your epoxy. You're never gonna have good edges if you don't first put some Bondo around particle board. So if I were coming into a home to do epoxy over an existing surface and my laminate was really sharp like this, epoxy does not like a sharp edge. So that little round over is all you need. That epoxy will now flow uniform, even, and beautiful. Do a lot of bondo like myself you could pick these bad boys up 
on Amazon or at your local automotive supply shop for like paint and cars. It's really cool for mixing Bondo on. You just mix up your batch and then rip that page off and mix up your next batch. If you don't have this, it's totally acceptable to mix your Bondo right up here on your countertop surface. You just may need to sand any high points, any residual Bondo that you missed. Sand that back smooth before you pour on the uh, undercoat. You're gonna pull out just a little bit of a time if you've never worked with Bondo before. And then we're gonna add some cream hardener. That's like your part B in epoxy. You wanna knead this cream hardener because it likes to separate. So I just give myself a little snake like that. Take that hardener and start pulling it. I want a nice uniform color. I don't wanna see any of that blue streaks. I scrape that bottom paper up in case there's some blue hiding under there like that. A little stinker. And Bondo, you don't have enough time like you do with the epoxy. So we need to work a little quick. And all I'm looking for here, guys, is just on my edge. I'm gonna apply some Bondo and then pull it back. You're gonna wanna sand the Bondo once it's dry. It's about 20 to 45 minutes, I'd say, depending on how much hardener you put in there. And this is also what I would do if I had a big uh, laminate edge that created a high point is I would Bondo that transition and then sand it and then it will not show. If you have a big line of laminate that's not smooth like this, you're gonna wanna Bondo the, that rolled corner because some laminate is quite thick and can leave a high point when you go to do that. I'm back, it's the next day and we're ready for the next step. My Bondo's nice and dry. I'm gonna sand that smooth with 150 grit sandpaper. And on that particle board table, we're gonna go two coats of black undercoat, nice and thin. On my laminate top, I'm gonna do two coats of bonding primer followed by the undercoat. And then we're gonna move the table out to where I could pour some resin. I'll put about one to two ounces per square foot to secure that carbon fiber. We'll let that dry. Come back the next day for a nice flood coat. Sand off those drips, apply the ultimate top coat, and we're gonna have a pretty sweet, awesome computer desk and don't forget, if you got any Bondo on the surface here, you wanna sand that down. You don't want any high points on that carbon fiber. I was checking out the old Amazon and I saw some pretty awesome gaming desks covered in carbon fiber, but they're insanely expensive. I did the math. Buying a Bench Depot desk, a little carbon fiber from Amazon and some Stone Coat Epoxy, you're gonna make your very own gaming desk for way less than you could purchase it. And at this point, you could customize it and do some pretty sweet stuff. This looks great. As I clean it, I could see the sanding marks, the scuff sand from that 60 grit. I know I'm gonna have a great adhesion now, especially using Stone Coat's bonding primer. This stuff is legit and it'll stand up next to any bonding primer on the market. There is no need to apply the bonding primer when applying epoxy over MDF, plywood, particle board, any wood substrate, the epoxy will bond in like tree roots bonding to that substrate. It's the smooth, slick surfaces that require the bonding primer. I let this coat dry about 20 minutes or so, and then you're ready for the second coat. And then I'm gonna let the bonding primer dry about an hour, maybe 45 minutes before coming back and hitting it with the first coating of undercoat. And don't forget your edges here. And remember, if you're going over your existing laminate and some of your edge laminate is loose, peel it off. Peel it off and bond to it. It's gonna be a better surface. Guys, don't forget, we've designed this undercoat to bond even with a little bit of dust. Goodbye, coffee stains. I'm gonna let this dry for four hours. Here in the winter months, just maybe even extend that a little bit. Throw the heater on. The point is you want the moisture out of that paint completely before you cover it with epoxy. Sometimes people apply way too much paint on your edges, so I'm just using extremely light pressure. Hit that roll. I'm just letting that roll or just glide. I'm not even pushing, really. Coat two. See how thin I went? You could see all the bonding primer below. That's what you want. You don't want it thick, caked up amount of paint where you could come and scratch it off. Like, see, this is almost too much right there. 
I'm gonna smooth it down. I'm going to take my gloved hand and wet down my edges. You can also get the finish really uniform this way. Grabbing it in the middle with a little overhang. As I'm applying pressure, the resin from below is saturating through. That's exactly what you want. And then I just come back with more resin. What I'm trying to do is really saturate this edge to get it to sit well. Alrighty guys, we're back, it's the next day. My first coating is nice and solid, it's cured well. So my next step is I'm gonna grab 220 on a sander, I'll grab a mask, and I'm just gonna lightly sand any bubbles open for the next coat of epoxy. I'm gonna go three ounces per square foot with art coat, just to make sure my edges are nice and coated. But from there, this project will cure, it'll be done. You wanna make sure you leave plenty of a skirt around this. On this end, I was a little short, so I was struggling wrapping that carbon fiber underneath, whereas the front and back and this side had plenty and was able to kind of use that trowel. The second thing I learned is I would have pre-cut my mat on a flat table where I could put a straight edge and cut it with like a razor blade nice and even, and then I just have a little skirt around the whole piece. That would have made the install a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So this little guy, that little bubble, you wanna sand that open, and it looks like we have a little gnat right here. So you're gonna sand him all the way out and then put that another coat over that, that'll hide that. And when sanding, your high points are really gonna jump out at you. You'll see glossy epoxy right around that, is I'm gonna sand that till it's completely matte. Now that's smooth, and what that is is a little air bubble. So when I clean this with isopropyl, I'll blast some in there, get that dust out, and it's gonna completely disappear. Very lightly by hand, rough up that glossy resin on there. And I'm gonna use some isopropyl alcohol, 91%. This is just gonna help us get rid of all that epoxy dust. That's a little one of those air bubbles I opened up, and that's probably just some sanding dust, so I'll take my alcohol and Blast it in there. Stone coat epoxy, good to the last drop. So I take my mixed epoxy and I pour it directly into the center of my project. After we've applied our metallic marble, whatever color coat you've done, you always wanna bring a three ounce coating of clear epoxy over that. That gives you depth, that protects what's below, and it also gives you more epoxy on those edges, which are gonna be your thinnest parts, keeping it away from your edges at first. Because as soon as you give epoxy an avenue to escape, it's gonna start running there. And now that I have it filled around the field, I'll start walking it off that front and side edges. And then I'll come back with my gloved hand and rub those edges out so I have good coverage. Mixing that bucket we mixed with that notch trowel while spreading the material nice and evenly. Now we're gonna chop the top. The first step is you're gonna wanna try to de-shed that brush. So I'm kinda pulling pretty hard 
I'm trying to eliminate any of those loose bristles. I'll pull a Bob Ross, slap it around. I have some residual epoxy in here. I just wet it down. And then I'm chopping the whole top randomly. And I'm gonna use the heel of the brush right where all that's oozing off. And I push it down so it spreads. You don't wanna do this. You're gonna be here all day. When you do that, you're covering a bunch of surface area. And I'm randomly going to hit the whole piece. All right, let's remove the air incorporated into this resin while working with it, which is a lot. But don't fret, it easily comes on out. So I'm gonna use a heat source. You could use a propane torch, you could use a heat gun, you can also use a blow dryer, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's gonna take a long time. You're gonna hold your propane torch about an inch or so from the surface, the resin will not catch on fire, and just sweep it. So you wanna let the epoxy cool maybe two to three minutes between torching uh, an additional time. You just want the epoxy to cool off as you heat it, it's gonna warm the resin, which makes it a little more fluid. And right here, I just made myself a customized bristle remover. All right, now I'm gonna torch it my second time. You could see most of the air is gone. All those pock marks, all the giant air bubbles are gone, but you have things like this, this cloudiness here, that's some air bubbles. I'm going to touch this one more time, and then I'm going to kill the lights and get the heck on out of here, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next step. So I'm back in Oregon. We're ready for the next step. I applied epoxy here thinking I would have enough mesh. Uh, whoops, I didn't. So how I let this just dry, let it go, nothing you could really do. And then I sanded it with 220 and cleaned all the dust, and now we could apply another coat of epoxy and have really, really good adhesion. You can apply two coats of epoxy over fresh epoxy without sanding, as long as you do it before 24 hours. I spread this with the trowel, and then I just used my gloved hand to smooth it out and really coat my edges. And I'm gonna coat underneath because I'm gonna tuck my um, carbon fiber a little bit underneath this. So take the time before you put the carbon fiber on to coat the bottom here. I'm gonna come back once it's all dry and sand any drips off after I've done all my coats. This is a great way to get rid of the trowel marks. And you can, if you just glide your hand across, you'll be able to feel the puddles and then you can walk those puddles to any low spots. This is a silicone tipped trowel, magic trowel or wizard squeegee. I'm gonna use it to saturate it into the resin. So the corners are tricky. Over there, I pulled too hard. So what I'm gonna do here is just take it easy and I'm just pushing the carbon fiber down. But if I pull too hard, I'll spread these fibers out and it'll show up. We're gonna let this dry. I'll be back tomorrow about 18, 20 hours from now for the next step before 24. 
No need to sand for the next step, especially on the next one, because we're doing a big flood coat. I'm gonna sand if I'm coming back and I got a bug in, I got nibs and nubs, I got a bristle I gotta get out. Sand those out. Uh, so you'll need to wait that 24 hours. We'll see you tomorrow for the next step. All right, we're back for coat number two. I'm gonna mix up three ounces per square foot. I round it up just a little bit to 24 ounces, but then I'll use that excess epoxy and really coat the bottom side of that carbon fiber. Now I'm gonna take my material and spread it. I'm gonna keep it from going over my edges at first. Once I'm pretty much spread, I can then start letting the epoxy go over my edges. You could either use a hand or a chop brush, and this is gonna get rid of any trail marks from spreading the resin. It's adding air bubbles, but that's not a problem. We'll be able to use a heat source to eliminate all the air. I'm gonna remove the air bubbles now just by passing a heat source over the project. So I'm done. I'm gonna let this chill overnight. We'll be back tomorrow for the next step. All right, guys, it's time to mix up the ultimate top coat, glossy edition. How much do I mix? You're gonna multiply the project square foot by 0.275. That's gonna tell you exactly how much to mix. And then we're gonna take that number and multiply it by 0.5, and that tells you exactly how much water to mix. I like to use quarter inch microfiber rollers. You could use the six inches, the nines. On the floors, I even go 18 inch jumbo rollers. So you could do that on the countertop if you wish. But step one is you always wanna remove any lint or fuzz off these bad boys. No matter how much money you spend on a roller, it's gonna have fuzz on it. So really, I angle it on the front, on the back and front. There's a lot of stuff that likes to hide right there. See all that fuzz? This is what you wanna eliminate out of that roller before putting it on your countertop. And for every wet roller, I have two dry rollers, just in case I saturate that. As soon as my roller starts making too much noise, it starts sounding sticky, I'm gonna set that aside and grab a fresh dry one. And we're mixing. This material is quite thick right out of the jar. You never wanna apply the ultimate top coat right to the countertop right out of the jar. You wanna thin it down. It's very thick out of the jar. See how it just, it's like Elmer's glue nearly, guys. And then I'll add a little bit of my water at a time and then mix. See the difference? See how the material self levels in itself instantly? We're going into the paint tray. All right, let's come in here and saturate your roller fully. Okay. Now that I have material on my project, I'm taking time to kind of get it as uniform as possible before switching to that dry roller. I see I have a good coverage. Now come to your edges. All right, remove excess material with that dry roller. Thanks for watching everybody. Make your own carbon fiber desk and share some pictures with us over at Stone Coat Insiders. That's our Facebook group. And until next time, from Stone Coat Epoxy, don't forget you got this and we'll see you on the next video. Hmm, I'm gonna enjoy me some nice cup of joe.